Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome to Wargame. Today we're going to be following along with Jaeger, who's going to be doing a British armor push over the flats of sorry over the flats of Asgard over here. Of course, the usual zones. November is usually your target. The enemy may come into November with a bunch of helicopters to counter your initial push. And over towards Kilo is usually once you have November your next stepping stone, then Mike, then Lima. And sometimes it's the other way around. You take November, then you push all the way around through the woods into Lima, and then you try to neutralize Mike. Let's see what Jaeger's going to do today. Anyway, he's using British armor. You can see he has a large assortment of tanks, as is his part here. Chieftain Mark 1s, sorry, Challenger Mark 1s, Challenger Mark 1s all over the place. Chieftain Mark 2s, though, are a bit more unusual. At least... I wouldn't use them because they are such terrible off-road tanks at only 40 kph. But their accuracy is decent, uh, their arm penetration for 35 points is decent. And of course you have to follow up these pushes with quite a few units, otherwise it's not really going to work out. So there's a lot of radar guided AA here. I really hope he has all of those selected under a hotkey, otherwise one seed aircraft could really, really mess stuff up there. Now, Zulu has been completely abandoned, which is not great. Because that means that until they capture Yankee, the reinforcements, and especially their aircraft, are going to have to go a long way. Their aircraft are going to come in from Victor. Reinforcements from Yankee. And uh, this is... God, it's hard to see. This is Jaeger's note. He says, push hard for November and keep your AA near your tanks here. Exactly the right call, because tanks are only as good as the AA that's covering them. If you don't have any kind of AA nearby, you're going to find your precious tanks go down very quickly. Now, I'm not exactly sure what this guy's doing. Type 90 here. He rushed over into Yankee, and that's when he stopped. He has a lot of infantry, and it's all sitting down in the open. Even his artillery is out here rather surprised, because normally I would expect these guys to keep pushing all the way into November. <coughs> and look at that. Lieutenant... What's that? Lieutenant FBR? Lieutenant BFR got nailed very, very hard by a couple of those AA units. And Jaeger got 470 points. However, the lieutenant also got 650, so he definitely got a few high point kills. It looks like Jaeger's going at it alone here. He has no cover whatsoever from his ally. Now, this is a replay that may include newer players, of course, with the latest influx of the sale, as well as being a 10v10, which usually is a little bit more forgiving than your standard type of, let's say, 2v2, 3v3, etc. Nice kill on a 200 point CV there. Probably a side shot on a T80. Yeah, looks like a T-80 UK to me. Very expensive command tank. Now he just keeps rushing in. There is just no resistance whatsoever. Except, of course, for those helicopters that he shot down earlier. Nice kill on the MiG there. It looks like the MiG didn't even drop. Bit of a curious choice here to put his chieftains over on the other side. Personally, I would put them inside this zone ASAP. To make sure that I can no longer, or that the enemy can no longer reinforce this position, which is exactly what they're doing. Now, considering the unit selection, I'm thinking that Lieutenant FBR might be using an airborne deck. Because we're not seeing very heavy vehicles, we're sure seeing a lot of vehicles, and he opened with a heavy, aggressive helicopter push. A bunch of Factorias, though, is not really the unit I would in this situation because their accuracy is pretty bad and against challengers well you're not going to be long for this world if you start to fire Factorias at challengers because the challengers are just going to laugh at you 19 frontal armor against I believe 16 armor penetration on the Factorium these guys however can still do a bit of damage at short range, they may be able to jam a missile into the side of the challengers. Challengers currently are having none of that. Look at that. Well, that was a 100% accuracy shot. 
Still though, we need to find their command vehicle. Otherwise, we have no position here. And we're just going to keep feeding, or Lieutenant uh, is going to just keep feeding Jaeger, which is not a bad thing. But at some point, it's going to be hard to keep this up. Now, he's wisely putting a couple of units over here to control this perimeter. He just doesn't have any recon at the moment, and this means that he's not going to be able to have anything for his tanks to shoot at. Now, I believe this is the time when the aviary had the old weapon. And um, by old weapon, I mean that this unit had a 2450 meter range and about 30 to 35 percent accuracy. That has been completely changed. It's been reduced in range by 1400 meters, but its accuracy has been buffed a lot. And these things fire apparently a lot faster. Their aim time is significantly reduced. Now, this is what I was afraid of, the helicopter coming in, but he's picking a, an interesting choice of helicopters in the MI4AV. And there we go, he surrendered. KA-52 is pretty much the biggest issue here, because it forces him to keep his radars off, so far as the radar-guided AA are still alive. And currently, I'm only seeing a few of them. Looks like they're contesting both Kilo and November at this point. And these challengers, there we go, that's what's to be done. These challengers have taken a lot of damage. Because even in significant numbers, rocket pods can be quite deadly. So the warriors, lacking any kind of radar guided AA, the warriors are going to have to do the job of taking down these helos. With their auto cannons, those wardens, they have a pretty good chance of doing it, in so far as they're not stunned. And by these uh, constant rocket pod spams, they're pretty much being perma stunned. I'm surprised that Jaeger hasn't already brought in a new AA unit, because he capped it about 20 to 30 seconds ago, which means that I would instantly spawn in a couple of new AA units, for example, the Chieftain Marksman or the Challenger Marksman, because those are just ideal against helicopters. But this works just as well. Missiles going in, taking out the target. Now over on the left, it looks like, uh, is this the Dutch? No, that's the German deck. I saw a Dutch deck. Oh, right. Now I mentioned this briefly, I think, in one of the videos about the Dutch. One of the Dutch units is currently bugged. That's the AB204B Vracht, which is a cargo helicopter. But I think that, considering it's the first cargo helicopter <coughs> of the AB204 type, or the Bell type, it's just been copied over from the command section and been given supplies. It has not been relieved of its command tag, which means that you can capture zones with it. Of course, this is a bug. It's not supposed to be in the game. And just ignore it for now. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it's overpowered. Whatever. Eugene will patch this soon. Because this is just wrong. This cannot be <laughs> the main plan of the Dutch deck. Otherwise, we have some really overpowered resupply units. Anyway, a lot of these vehicles going out of fuel. These Chieftain Mark II's are done. These Chieftain Mark II's are not long going to be... Are not going to be long until they get done with their fuel. A couple of the other units are about halfway through. Centurion AVREs are also very heavy drinkers, as I call them. Especially once you start taking these things off road, they just start burning fuel like there's no tomorrow. The interesting part is that he was able to clear out this sector with just the use of Challenger Mark 1. That saved him quite a lot of funds because I personally would have gone in with Challenger Mark 2. Because the Challenger Mark 2 is just far, far superior to the Challenger 1 Mark 1. Better firepower, better maneuverability, um, a bit more recon even. Wow, what? Okay, sorry, I got completely sidetracked here because they just drove a CV right into Mike. Looks like they're not encountering a lot of resistance over here. Can they keep this thing going, though? Where is the enemy? I think that Red 4 has two people who left. That was the lieutenant and these uh, Chinese characters. Excuse me if they're Japanese, but I really don't know how to read those. We got Dave in the middle. 
See, that's at least an easy name to pronounce. Dave. Matryoshka over here with the Corps Mariners, 95. And apparently these Corps Mariners, and I haven't really tested them myself yet in that capacity, but apparently they have some incredibly good firepower against Spatsnaz. I don't really see how that's going to work, but I've been hearing stories of the Corps Mariners taking out Spatsnaz and Legion troopers without taking too much damage. Another note about the Dutch, um, as you're looking at the units, they are all called John Doe. All of the Dutch units are called John Doe. This, again, of course, is not what Eugene had in mind. And they apparently just forgot to put in the Dutch name tabs. And, ex again, I expect that to be patched pretty soon. Now, back to Jaeger. He's reinforcing his position in Mike. He has a really good position here. The only thing is that I'm not seeing any AA being fielded. We just have a couple of Rolands, and if the enemy really wanted to, they could push over this position pretty damn quickly with a bunch of MI4s. Just those recon... no, sorry, the uh, Rocketbot Halos. And it looks like they are starting to bite back. We got T-72Ms coming in, as well as a PU patrolling overhead. And they're just pushing out a new CV here. Not sure what this guy was thinking, but these Humpies are going to have the time of their life. Now, although that Thanayon Shikiji's got the kill. Oh dear, you may want to park these guys right now. Or not. Oh, there we go. Look at that. They give these tanks absolutely no quarter, and they are barely taking any losses. Although, now they're starting to get fired at heavily by those T-72Ms. A couple of good hits, but I think they also blew up a friendly um, WAPC. You need to keep your distance from that guy. There we go. Yeah, he's a bit panicked. Well, I'm not surprised, because he just perked his ass right next to a tank. Type 90 keeps going here. Oh, wow. Found the prize. 210, correction, 220 points of artillery there. And they are currently so bloody inaccurate that they're not able to hit anything. Now, Jaeger, it's your time to shine, buddy, because you have a metric ton of tanks all sitting here doing nothing. This push should have been on the front line. This push should have kept rolling, because in an armored deck, you are the armored fist. You are the one who's going to have to do all the heavy lifting. And instead, I'm seeing a... I'm not sure which deck this is. I mean, it's likely to be either South Korea... ...or Blue Dragons. Let's see, that's Type 90. Kutais... Or is it a Japanese deck? Yeah, I think it's a Jap deck. Mitsubishi CV. Yeah, he's using a Japanese deck. Japanese deck is pretty powerful, but it lacks a lot of the armor. Because you only get those Kiyomarushikis, the 170 point super heavies. And then the Nanayon Shiki G is your second best tank. So he really needs to have some uh, heavy armor backup. In the meanwhile, though, Jaeger is rushing the other way. Again. Rushing in without any kind of resistance. There is just nothing out here. Okay, I'm interested. Where is the enemy? Where are all the players? Because we got the Lobster here. Uh, Shaposhishkov. Is that the way I pronounce it? Shaposhnikov or something? AMX 5120. So that's three players on this flank. Trying to fend off... Who's this? God, color blindness is not helping right now. Cool. P. Thatcher? P. Thouser? I'm running through these units to find out where the enemy has all their players. Because I think that they're either being tripled or even quadrupled on one flank, which means that they're fighting against multiple enemies on one flank. And it's a bit curious. This is... what's that? LSD? LSD-001? 
who has a lot of firepower sitting here doing nothing. Then over here we got another fire support squad without recon. Chingushka. LSD. Oh, here's another player. Demon Pixel. Dukat. Interesting. The guy that I haven't seen is that Swads QL. He might be AFK altogether, considering he's absolutely not feeling any units. So yeah, that explains why they're not defending their positions here. Because they are just completely outnumbered. Look at that. 17,000 points versus 9,000. They just don't stand a chance. They just don't stand any single chance. Now, again... Um, Jaeger, if you're going to push in here, bring recon. An FV-432 does not qualify as a recon unit. And you only saw those trailers pretty much because you stumbled onto them, not because your uh, recon did its job and tried to see them. So Jaeger, a couple of pointers for this game, or for your gameplay style. Make sure that you bring whatever units you brought initially. These units are likely to already be very high veterancy because armor deck. And not only that, they're also likely to have gained some veterancy because you used them already. Especially one of those earlier Chieftain or sorry, Challenger Mark 1s, they, they were able to side shot a T80 UK that instantly turned one elite. But all of these units are just sitting here. And this is really, really starting to ramp up. I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six challengers, a whole lot of AA, chieftains, uh, chieftain marksmans. You can move this entire group away. Everything in here. You could even go so far as to take the CV. Of course, I wouldn't really recommend it because it's an income point, but you could even take the CV away if you really needed it. Same for the units here. Warriors, Spartans, Gazelles, uh, Centurions, the Chieftains there. We got here Green Jackets. Be more aggressive. And I know you're already being plenty aggressive right here. As you were able to capture all of the Red Force flanks. But there's more you can do. Bring out those tanks. And either come into the flank of Gulf here or keep rushing around to Echo and then Alpha to start neutralizing their enemy aircraft. Because with that out of the way, you're going to feel quite a bit safer. Now I'm going to push this thing up a little bit because I'm starting to sense that it's going to be over pretty soon. Because, again, Echo is just not defended whatsoever. Good recon, but just being able to fly in here is ridiculous. It says, move your Apaches. I'm not sure why WP Huang is not moving, because he can get some really cheap kills here. All those PTZ 89s are worth 65 points, and there's a lot of them. Even some PTZ 89s, or correction, the same unit. Warriors are not ideal to push in. We've got a gazelle still scouting ahead, the captured Echo. And they just keep rolling on. Do cut surrenders. Over to the next. Another command vehicle spotted down there in the woods. And AMX 5120 really likes his artillery. Another command vehicle spotted. Fortunately for the gazelle, it cannot return fire at the gazelle. Okay, so this leaves them without any aircraft, and it gives them reinforcement zones Charlie, and nope, not even Gulf anymore. So let's push into Charlie and get this thing over and done with, because there are simply no more players. Still though, the units over here, I mean, wow. 
keep moving. Bloody hell. I just saw a huge blob on the minimap. Look at all that. What is that, actually? An M727 IHawk PIP triple X? Is that the PIP 3? No, it's a PIP 2 missile. Weird. I haven't ever seen those triple X units there. Lots and lots and lots of artillery from Kigali. I hope it's doing in some good. Behos. Again, quite a few units that you could push up with if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to point out something else here that I noticed from Kigali. Or Kagali. Kagali is pushing up with an armored push. It's a lot of K1s. You could probably make do with half the firepower. But there's no AA. And no AA, well, at this stage, it doesn't really hurt you that much. But having no AA means you're opening yourself up to a helicopter rush. And no recon means you're not going to be able to spot the helicopters until it's too late. Let alone anything else. If you would have VDV in these structures, and they would be told to hold their fire, they could wipe out all of the K1s. As for the rest of the map, let's see where they have large concentrations of units. Lots and lots of artillery here as well. That's Cloverade. Uh, we got PT Hauser here. Again, Clover A. What are they all firing at? Charlie, probably. Yeah, it's just artillery barraging this position. Unfortunately, a Jaguar got shot down there by Jaeger. Or from Jaeger. It seems to be just casually pushing through here. CV is almost in a position to move. Again, this town. Jaeger, it's an interesting replay, but keep your forces going, because the more forces you have on the front line, the harder you make life on the enemy. And, of course, at this point of the game, you just don't need them anymore, because, come on, let's face it, it's over. But keep moving. Actually, that's going to be a good title for this game, keep moving. Because the more units you have on the front line, the more damage you can deliver. And damage delivery is what you do best in an armor deck. Motorized decks are really good at capturing positions such as towns and forests. Mechanized decks are somewhere halfway between motorized and armored. They are very, very good support for armor. But not having the armor on the front line is quite unusual. Anyway, enough said about that. Let's speed this thing up to see when and where they find the last CV. Oh, they got two of them. Three of them, even. And of course, Blue Four keeps rushing in. They keep heavily shelling this position, but I'm not sure how many people are even left here. Lynx Toe 2s, Kinsam, Closed Arrows, Roku, WAPCs are coming in from Type 90. Look at that, Type 90 has been all over the map. He started out over here, rushed towards Yankee, rushed November, rushed Kilo, rushed Mike, Lima, Fox, uh, Echo, Alpha, Bravo, and now he's all the way over here. That guy has some mileage, seriously. Where are the tanks? Ah, there's Jaeger. Jaeger's now starting to field some more Challenger 1s, uh, as well as Challenger 1 Mark 2s. There's CV, and that's it. Is There we go. Alright, um, this got pretty much ruffle stomped. Totally, totally ruffle stomped. Now, the thing is, Jaeger, keep moving. That's the last I'm going to say about it. You got a great score. But you could have been a lot more useful to your team if you had just kept going with that armor. That's the point of an armor deck. Keep going, keep pushing, keep fighting. As for the kill list, I'm interested to see which units got the kills and how well it was spread out. Well, it's not bad. It looks like all of these units got a few decent kills. No really exceptional kill lists. That's mostly because he kept bringing in new units. Instead of using his, let's say, his old units, the units that he already had in. 
If you have units that you already have in, like for example a Challenger 2 or a Challenger 1 Mark 3 combination, then you're going to see larger kill lists, which means that for example one Challenger 1 Mark 2, cursor action, one Challenger 2 is going to have a large kill list because it's going to be operating so long on the front line that it's just going to ramp up kill after kill after kill. Overall though, not bad gameplay. Um, it was just a pretty inexperienced team and that's why they were able to roll right over them. Still, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it taught you something. Not just Jaeger, but all of you. Keep moving! I myself am always trying to look back at what I fielded before. I'm trying to look back at what I still need to field. What is it that I may need later? What is it that I already have deployed? And where can I deploy those units elsewhere? So, let me know what your thoughts are on this gameplay. Let me know if you have any tips for any of the gameplay people, or sorry, any of the players that you saw here. And other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon for the next video.